Uh, hello, let us look at the uh, first question here. Uh, we'll be looking at the uh, integrals with trigonometry. dy over dx is equal to tangent of x and what is y equal to? Now, uh, first we, what we can do is this. We can rewrite this one as then. Then what we are looking for is y is equal to integral of tangent of x dx. But what we can do is we can rewrite tangent as this sine of x over cosine of x dx. Now, then wait a minute. Can we possibly uh, get the integral using the u substitution? That's right. If you set u as cosine of x, then we get to realize that du must be equal to negative sine of x dx. So then here you should be able to see that cosine of x right over here that will be replaced with u and then negative sine of x in fact since we don't have the negative sign we're just going to be attaching it can be replaced with du so in other words by substitution we can rewrite this one as negative coming from here uh, du over u now, integral of 1 over u simply becomes ln, so we have negative ln of absolute value of u plus c. Now, but since we know that uh, u was equal to uh, cosine, then what we end up getting is negative ln of absolute value of cosine of x plus c. Now I'm looking for something that has this one, but you know what, there's none of them uh, is exact match of this. What do you realize about this negative sign? The fact that we have negative sign over here, that implies that we can bring this one to the negative one power, meaning ln of 1 over cosine of x plus c. That's right. Now once we have done that one, then we should be able to realize that that, uh, that is equal to secant of x. So our answer will be choice C. All right, let's move on to the next question. Here we have uh, integral in two different locations. And in fact, some sort of function f of x is in the middle. How, what is this question asking us to find? Yes. This question is, in fact, looking for uh, integration by parts. So here we have x squared and cosine of x dx. In fact, integration by parts is the opposite of the product rule here. Now, if you can assume that x squared is the f of x, and then cosine of x dx is the g prime of x then we get to realize something now f of x is equal to x square so therefore f prime will be equal to 2x dx and then since g prime is equal to cosine of x dx then g becomes sine of x. Now, by the uh, integration by parts, we will realize that we're going to put these two things together. As the first portion, so in other words, x squared times sine of x. Now, uh, obviously we can, I guess, plus c because it's not definite integral minus the other two expressions sine x 2x or 2x sine x that is and then if you had to integrate this one that would have been the basically our um, um, integration by part 
strategy. Now, uh, when you compare uh, what we just have done with the uh, given uh, expression, you will realize that in place of f of x, we have or x squared sine of x, which will be a choice. P becomes our answer. All right, let's look at number uh, three. Now we have tangent square. How do you uh, integrate tangent square? In fact, if you're to borrow the idea from uh, trig identity, we realize that tangent square is in fact equal to secant square x minus one. Now this is a bit easier for us to integrate because secant square is in fact derivative of tangent. So integral of secant square would have been tangent of x and minus x goes from 0 to pi over 4. Now once you plug in pi over 4 here we get tangent of pi over 4 minus pi over 4 minus tangent of 0 minus 0. We know that tangent of 0 and 0 is entirely equal to 0 so we can just cancel them out to be 0. What do you realize about tang uh, tangent of pi over 4? That's right, that's equal to 1 minus pi over 4. So 1 minus pi over 4 would have been our answer, which is choice B. Let's look at the next question. We have arc sine of x. Now, uh, uh, you know what, There's I cannot think of a, uh, an expression that gets you arc sine of x as the um, uh, function of x right away. I mean derivative uh, right away. So in fact, if you think about this one, uh, we can do this one by, uh, by parts just like earlier. So what, what, uh, what we're going to be doing is we can assume that uh, arc sine of x as the f and then dx as g prime. Now, then what we have to realize is the f prime, meaning derivative of arc sine of x, would have been equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And then g, in this case, would have been equal to antiderivative, antiderivative of the, uh, dx would be simply equal to x. So therefore, what we end up getting is, first uh, portion is f times g, so we got to multiply this portion times this portion, which gets us x arc sine of x minus integral of the other two over here. So we get x over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. That becomes our final answer. So which one will that be? Uh, it looks like choice E becomes the answer then. Alright, let us move on to the next question. Number five. Which of the following is equal to this one? Now, if you remember uh, that this resembles of the derivative of arc sine, because if you arc sine of x is equal to integral of 1 over radical 1 uh, minus x squared dx. So if you refer to this one, we will realize that in, in place of x, uh, in place of 1, we have 25, and that is one thing that's not uh, fitting. So what we can do is we can have some use of substitution here. What if we said u as 5x or x as a 5u x equals 5u the reason why we pick 5 is so that we can uh, bring out 25 together then here we get dx is equal to that's right 5 du now using these two ideas then our expression now becomes this way well, let me just do it in the bottom. We get integral of du, or 5 du rather, square 
square root of 25 minus 25 u square. When you factor out 25, then we get 5 du over 5 square root of 1 minus u square. And 5 and 5 can cancel out. Then here you can see that easily. This has got to be arc sine of u plus c. But since u is equal to uh, x over 5, because x was 5u, that means uh, what we end up getting is arc sine of x over 5 plus c becomes our final answer, which seems to be choice A. All right, let's move on to the next question, number six. Here, uh, what can we do? Uh, the fact that we got uh, sine as the um, derivative, then antiderivative would have been simply uh, cosine, but not just any cosine, but negative cosine. So in fact, our answer would have been uh, either B, A, or C. But by the chain rule, or uh, we can assume the U substitution, uh, what we would have gotten was, if you take the derivative of cosine of 2x plus 3 in any one of these things, we would have had a 2 coming out, but we don't have 2 on our uh, integral, so therefore we should have divided by 2, which is choice C becomes our answer. So you can uh, solve this one intuition in this way. Or another thing which you could have done was, uh, using the u as 2x plus 3, and then you, you could have uh, proceeded, and then you would have gotten C as a choice also. All right, let us move on to the next question, number seven. This is similar to uh, what we have done earlier. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, let's try to look into this one together. We have integral of f of x and sine of x dx is equal to negation of all these things given. Now, what is f of x could be? Now, what we like to do is this. By using the integ uh, integration by parts, integral of f of x sine of x dx. Now, what if we assume that this is g prime and then this one is f as it is given? Then, what we end up getting is we need to figure out f prime, which we do not, which we do not know at this point. Now, g in this case would have been yes, negative cosine of x. Now, then one thing that which we get to realize is this. Based upon this given, what we get to see is that when you multiply uh, when you multiply g and f, that would have been the first term. And we end up getting negative f of x, negative from here, and f of x from here, and then cosine of x, minus. And then the second, uh, second integral would have been product of these two. Uh, so we end up getting negation from cosine makes this one into positive now. Originally, there was a negative sign. Uh, in integration by parts, but this negative sign made this one into positive. All right, now f prime and then cosine of x dx. Now, when you compare this portion and this portion, you will realize that everything matches except f prime and 3x squared. Then we, uh, we can assume that f prime must be corresponding to 3x squared, that tells us f of x must be then integration of 3x squared, which is x cubed plus c. So then, which one will that be? Seems to be choice b, b is the only answer. Let us look at number 8. Here, what are we going to do? Uh, yes, we could have solved this question using the uh, trick substitution, you know. But this is actually very uh, quite uh, popular expressions. And look at the numbers, it's rather simple. You, uh, it, I think it's much better for you to realize what this expression represents. 
Now, this in fact, 4 minus x squared, let us call this one as y. Then you can square both sides, 4 minus x squared would have been equal to y squared, isn't it? And then you can add x squared from both sides, then you will realize that 4 is equal to x squared plus y squared. In fact, this is a circle with the radius of 2. But, let us say this is radius, of t radius is 2. Now, but since we have sign in front of the radical was nothing meaning positive, then we are only looking for the upper section of the circle. But out of upper section of the circle, what we are looking for is x has to be from 0 to, 0 to 2. So essentially, we are looking for this quarter circle. Then what is the area of the quarter circle? We can do that. Uh, because area of the entire circle will be pi 2 squared. Because radius is 2. But this is quarter of a circle. So divide that by 4. Then we end up getting pi as the answer. Choice C becomes the answer. Alright, uh, let us look at number 9 together. <coughs> so here we have dy over dx is equal to y uh, secant square of x. Now, uh, how are we going to do this? In fact, what we can do is we can separate the variables. In other words, we get dy over y is equal to, by cross multiplication, uh, secant square x dx. See if that makes sense to you now. And then what we can do is we can integrate both sides. Then here we get ln of u, uh, ln of y with the absolute value is equal to here. Uh, what is the antiderivative of secant square? It would have been tangent x plus c. Now, what they have mentioned was y equals 5 when x equals 0. Then if I have to plug it in, ln of 5 is equal to tangent of 0 plus c. Tangent of 0 is equal to 0, so c has to be equal to ln of 5. Now, then this now becomes ln of y of absolute value must be equal to tangent of x plus ln of 5. To get rid of ln, so that we could have y by, y by itself, we can raise both of them to e. So e to the ln of y is equal to e to the tangent of x plus ln of 5. Notice that this portion becomes e and ln. Uh, mechanically, you know, they cancel each other out. We end up getting y equals e to the tangent of x times e to the ln of 5. Once again, e and ln can mechanically cancels out, leaving us 5 as a coefficient. So now, then, that gives us C as the our answer. Alright, great. So we'll stop here for now, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.